brother. Hey, Tell, how are you? <laughs> good I'm good, Keith. How are you today? I'm doing, I'm doing good, Tell. So, how was your day so far? It's just started. Uh, well, it was challenging at first. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why it wasn't going in, but hey, um, it, it's really great to talk to you, man. Thanks for yeah. having me on. Oh, this is my pleasure, Tell. It's my pleasure. So, Tell. Uh, so our uh, last month August, you put up your single "We Get By." So can you tell me a bit about the songwriting and the production behind this song? Okay. Well, um, some years ago, probably maybe eight or nine years ago, um, a former band member um, of mine he had approached me with some material that he had that he had been working on, and he just wanted me to. I guess give it a listen and see what I thought about it. And I instantly loved it. I'm like, wow, this is really great stuff, but it didn't fit the band that we were in at the time. So we worked on it a little bit and I just kind of hung on to it mm -hmm. and didn't really have a place to put it. So it was on the shelf for a while. And then with the lockdown, of everything going on with the whole COVID thing and stuff. I, I didn't really have a lot to do. No tours were happening and things like that. So I decided to bring out that song just for the heck of it and, and record it. And it just kind of took off. I, I didn't expect any of it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but I put it out there just to see what people thought. And luckily, they most of them like it. Um, you know, I don't know about everybody, but I, you know, I've, I've gotten a good response so far. So, that, so that's good. Fingers crossed, you know, it keeps going. Yeah, that sounds great. Sounds great. And you, you brought up uh, these night as band members, Nick and Russell into it. So how did this all happen? That happened um, because I was working in the same studio that they work in. And we have a common friend christian lawrence that i do a lot of work with and he actually made the introduction um he basically i had asked him for advice where's a great place to record my drum tracks and he's like well i know this studio that i work with and a lot of d d snyder's guys work there as a matter of fact his drummer owns the place and he can record your drums excellent. I love them, yada, yada. So I went over there, and I got to be honest with you, Dexter's Lab recording, that, that was the easiest time I've ever had in the studio trying to get done what I needed to get done. Usually it, it's just a big pain in the butt, and you feel like pounding your head against the wall, you know, till you get to the end of it, and then you're happy. Nikki Belmore, he's the, he's the guy that runs the place. Amazing. Just an amazing producer. Puts you at ease. He, he knows his stuff. And so it just made the recording process that much more enjoyable. And I'll go there forever now. That guy is amazing. Sounds great. Sounds great. And recently, D. Snyder himself put a tweet on you guys. So how do you feel about that? I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Uh, Nick Petrino, the the, uh, the guitar player that's on that recording, D had tweeted about it at about 10 p.m. our time over here, Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. And by 10.03, Nick had sent me a text saying, oh, my God, D is, you know, posting about the song. And all I could just write were the letters OMG, you know, like, oh, my God. And uh, so that certainly helped a lot with um, the legitimacy, I guess, of the song. You know, when people saw that D had tweeted about it, I got a few more listens that day. You know, a little bit more traffic on my site. I'm like, well, that certainly helped. So I, I appreciate him being a good sport about it, too, seeing how I used half of his band to record yeah. my song. I, but no, great people, everybody there. Russell Pizzuto, Nick Petrino, Nikki Bellmore, uh, Joe Town, Joe Delaney, that's the guy that sang on it. 
uh, Christian Lawrence, e everybody involved with that recording, just amazing people, amazing, amazing. And it probably wouldn't sound half as good without those people there. You know. Sounds, sounds good. And uh, do you think this could open doors to have some kind of collaboration with D Snyder and his band in the future? From your mouth to God's ears. Okay, I hope so. I can only wish and hope. Because um, I've always been a fan, you know, of D since back in the day and stuff like that. I used to spray paint the Twisted Sister logo around the city. I, I, I'm probably incriminating myself right now. But, uh, you know, years ago when I was a teenager, just because I thought it was so cool. And, and um, now to be working with some of these people... And especially getting props from D himself on the record, it, it's, I don't want to be cliche and call it a, a dream come true, but it kind of is, you know, I, I'm, I'm just thrilled. And uh, I'm really excited about the, the rest of the album that's coming. Because if everybody likes this song, song so well, then um, again, I, I, I hope they, they like the rest of the album equally as much. Sounds good, sounds good, Helen. And Helen, like, uh, what is the current uh, phase that the album process is on? And do you have a expected date of release? Uh, I'm sorry, of which, of which one? Your current album that you're working on. Do you have a oh, date oh, of the, release? Yeah, the, the album itself probably won't be finished till the end of this year. Maybe early January or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to shoot for an early, actually, 2023 release of the entire album. Yeah. However, we'll have an EP that comes out in probably maybe four months, three or four months, something like that, however long it takes them to go through the steps. Because once we record it, there's still a couple, like a 60-day waiting period that yeah. they do legal things, and I'm, I'm not sure about that. That's above my pay grade. I don't know. And then it'll be out. So I, I'm thinking like maybe February of gotcha. 2022 will be the EP. Got it, got it. And, and uh, Talon, would you like to talk a bit about Bomber Alley since it's a new band that you have started? So can you tell me a bit about how it all started for you? Well, Bomber Alley started out of a necessity to release that single, We Get By. Yeah. Okay, so we went to the studio, recorded it, it came out great, and then now we're left with, well, what are we gonna do with it? And I couldn't really put it out under the name Talon Black because probably nobody would buy the record. Who's gonna buy a Talon Black record? Nobody, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the singer, I'm just the drummer, so. I had to come up with a band and um, that that's pretty much it. I, I used to live in an area that was very close to an Air Force base mm -hmm. and every day they'd fly overhead to where you couldn't even hear yourself on the phone. You had to wait till they <laughs> flew by and then you could continue the conversation. And that's pretty much where that came from. It was just an alley or a pathway that they yeah. just used to fly over every day and that's where the the name came up from and just the imagery from old like world war ii fighter planes and and bombers and in the paintings they would have on the sides of the planes i always thought that was cool and so basically that that's how bomber alley got started just as a necessity to release the single yeah. and now that people actually like the single i have to form an actual an, an entire live band now where it was just a recording project before so what would be the plans to uh like right now you have the band members of this Snyder since this Snyder will be busy with his with his touring and stuff so what would be your plans to bring up the band members into the band do you have any plans as such well um that's exactly it i have to go completely around d schedule Obviously, you know, um, but I, I don't mind. I don't mind. I feel very privileged and honored to to work with these people um, a, as it is. And uh, 
so basically if he goes out on tour i'm i'm, I'm gonna have to schedule around that good. Which, which is fine which is absolutely fine sounds, sounds good and uh, so i i'm hoping yeah you know maybe sometime at the end of the year good, good. next year yeah so probably the touring will not gonna be happening anytime this year so what post release of the album you might be having some plans for a touring i believe yeah uh we believe it or not already got an offer to do dates in europe and i had to politely put them on hold because we well, we don't have enough songs written and recorded yet to actually go do a tour. I, I, I thought it was a bit early. However, I was very flattered to receive the invitation. So that that's also going to be around 2023 sometime, probably spring of 2023. Um, it'll be like Germany, the Czech Republic, Poland, and uh, probably England, France, things like that. Um. Again, you know, it's a little ways off. I'm, I'm just trying to get through the whole recording process right now. Sounds good, sounds good. And uh, bringing back the 80s LA rock back into the scene, it's totally amazing to hear those old time rocking songs back again. So how do you feel making music with those era? I, I don't think I've ever left that era, to be honest with you, you know, whether it became cool again, or to me, it's always been cool. It, that's just the music that I, I connect with the most. Um, I've tried many other genres of music, but this is my best fit for sure. It's just the music that I love and love to play and grew up around. And uh, so I, I guess I'll be stuck in this decade forever. As a matter of fact, I, I went on an audition one time. I, I'll tell you a short story. I went on an audition. We went through the process. They liked me. We did a couple shows together. But before doing the shows, one of the two guitar players in that band wasn't present for the audition. The singer calls this guy up while I'm sitting behind the drums and says, hey, so-and-so, I got that drummer here, blah, blah, blah. Do you remember the year 1984? And you could hear the guy on the other end of the phone say, yeah, I guess so. Well, this drummer's still there. <laughs> and so, um, like I said, I, I guess it just sticks. That sounds good. That's interesting to hear. <laughs> and, and Chandler, would you like to share some of the great moments that you had over the years? Uh, boy, I wish I could put my finger on you know, any one or two particular highlights, just, just this is going to sound boring, but ju just the overall chance to travel and get to perform and meet all these people. If I start listing things, I'll forget 10 even cooler things that I probably should have mentioned to you later after the interview. So I'll just kick myself for that later. It just, I really just love the touring part of it and the, and the performing and in that kind of thing. Um, working with some of my heroes, you know, from growing up, still having posters on my wall of the same people that I'm working with now still blows my mind, you know. So it, it, it's just that, just being near and working around a lot of the people that I consider heroes. That sounds good. Sounds that, that, that's just pretty much why I do it and why I love to do it. Sounds great, Helen. And Helen, what would be the dream for you? The dream for me, oh boy, that people keep listening to my records. Uh, you know, to just be able to do this more than I do currently, to just tour full time as much as my body can handle it. Uh, I guess just to keep going, keep the dream alive, you know. Um, I never want to stop because that means the party's over. And that's never any fun, you know. So uh, I, I'm just going to keep going as long as I can go. That, that's my dream, you know, and that people just keep enjoying the music. Sounds good, sounds good. And A bigger you, house, maybe. <laughs> that would be awesome. So, so how do you look into the future? What would be the plans for you in the future? The plans for me in the future? Uh, well, right now is finishing that album and being able to tour and support that. I 
I can't think beyond say 2023 because I'm not even in 2022 yet. And that's as far as I got. But uh, yeah, I, I just hope the band is successful and uh, that people really enjoy the music. That's all. Uh, when when we go out to actually play this stuff live, that that's where I'm going to get my boost is actually to perform this music for people. Like I can't wait. If they like it on the record, they're going to like it even better in person. Sounds good. So how has the journey of music been in your life so far? Boy, that's a struggle. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, it's kind of like being at the beach, you know, there's waves, it's up and down and up and down. And I guess you have to act almost like a, some sort of a rock and roll surfer and just kind of stay up on that wave as long as you can go and not wipe out at the bottom. And even if, even if you wave or even on the down days, just know that, you know, there's going to be more ups again. Like I said, it, it's a wave or a roller coaster. It's just ups and downs, ups and downs, and just try to not dwell in the down part when you're there. We all have those moments, but they're short lived, you know, something cool will be right around the corner. And uh, that that's a, the best way I could describe it. Just a lot of ups and downs. And, and I just try to appreciate the ups when they happen. You know, I'll take the win. Sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. And uh, tell him, uh, like, uh, I know Bob, you have just created Bomber Alley. And do you have any plans to start work on more projects in the future? Or do you want to stick only with Bomber Alley for now to make it big? Oh, no, I'm always up for hire. <laughs> for sure. If somebody wants to hire me, like if if anybody's listening, if LA Guns, Faster Pussycat, Rat, Tora Tora, Kicks, you know, Britney Fox, somebody like that wants to call me, absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> give, me, give me a shout. And I'm willing to work with all kinds of people. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, tell them finally, what would be your message to the fans around the world? My message, I, I guess my only message right now is I, I just have to give thanks to the people that are helping me out right now. Um, my message is, is never, ever give up. But, uh, you know, I, I have to, I, I have a small list here, so I don't forget anyone. I have to thank Christian Lawrence, Vaughn Artist, The Orchard, Sony, MindSnap Music, Dick Bortner, Jake Allard, Nick Petrino, Russell Pizzuto, Joe Town, and Nikki Belmore. Those guys have been instrumental in making this happen for me. And, and I, I just, I really, really appreciate their help. Sounds great. Sounds great, Talon. And Talon, thank you so much for having me today in this interview. And thank you so much for your time. And thanks so much for the music you've been giving to us, to the musical fraternity. Thanks again for that. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having me on, man. You have a great day. Yeah, you too, my friend. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, brother. Take care.